We have one more case. I'm off of this one. Good morning, Mr. Varta. You have 10 minutes. Good morning, Your Honors. Uh, for the record, uh, John C. Varta, Jr., appellant. And attorney uh, Eric Jaros with me uh, for moral support, if for no other reason. And now may it please the Court. In uh, 1995, I owned two used car dealerships, uh, fairly successful ones. On November 27th of the same year, a William Schaefer, Massachusetts State Trooper, entered my Lowell dealership for a routine uh, inspection of my record book. As a result of his inspection, he filed a report with his supervisor and stated first that I didn't believe in maintaining the traditional record book, and second, that I had my own method of maintaining records, and third, that I had a bone to pick with the registrar. In his conclusion, he recommended a hearing before the registrar. In March of 96, the registrar did, in fact, revoke all my dealer plates indefinitely. A couple of months later, in May, the registrar changed the law and allowed dealers to either use the traditional record book or an automated system, uh, which was the same as I was using when Trooper Shaver came into my office, a computerized system. In July of uh, the same year, I appealed the registrar's decision in Superior Court. The following year, in May of 97, I filed a lawsuit in federal court against William Schaefer and Gerald Nazo, the registrar, for violation of protected speech. Shortly after, my customers reported uh, that their cars couldn't be registered because of the paperwork being rejected. Mr. Varda, let me ask you one question. Yes, Your There are normal avenues of appeal whenever you are appealing from any decision of a trial court or even an intermediate appeal court. You've sought an extraordinary avenue appeal, which is only available when there's no adequate alternative avenue of appeal. Why should we even be entertaining this as an appeal when you can go through the normal route? Why should the Supreme Judicial Court be considering this case? Uh, Your Honor, it's my understanding that this is the, the proper path to proceed up the ladder. Um, I, I followed that path. Um, essentially, I appealed uh, the appeals court. Uh, I don't know of any other way. Uh, I don't believe that You take that an appeal from a decision of the appeals court. If you're proceeding directly into the Supreme Judicial Court, it means, and the statute is very clear, that you don't have an adequate avenue of appeal. You filed a petition with a single justice. Yes, I filed, I filed a petition that with a single justice. That is not the normal avenue of appeal from an adverse ruling in the either district court, superior court, any other trial court to the appeals court. You have to, you have to petition if you are affected by an advert, if you don't like the decision of the appeals court, you have to petition and we seven justices can decide whether or not to take your case. Not everybody has an automatic right to proceed in the Supreme Judicial Court. I understand that, Your Honor, that there is no automatic right, but I believe that this Court has the, uh, the power to, uh, to rule in extraordinary uh, circumstances, and this case presents an extraordinary circumstance, and that, that circumstance is prosecutorial misconduct to a, uh, a high degree, uh, and I'm sure that... Uh, what are you seeking to do, vacate your conviction, get a new trial? Yes, Your Honor. Uh, I, that's all, all I'm asking for is a fair... All, that's all over and done with. It's, it's gone to the appeals court, it's been affirmed, and it's come up here, and we've denied further appellate review. So there's nothing more we can do on that. 
So that's uh, in other words, there is no recourse for a, for a person that uh, that has been wronged by uh, the state's prosecutors, the state's attorneys. No, you have a normal avenue. You you file a complaint in the superior court or the district court. It's considered by that court, and you have the right of appeal, which you exercise to the appeals court. The appeals court did not agree with you. You can seek further appellate review, and this court can decide whether or not to take it. And that was all done. That happened. If why, did, why did the court uh, – the, the thing that uh, surprises me is the fact that uh, – the, the thing that's, that's surprising is the mechanism that's not available for a person to overcome what's happened to me as far as being convicted, wrong, wrongfully convicted. There is a mechanism. And, in fact, there, there is no mechanism. It was, it was determined at the appellate level that you were not wrongly convicted. And that decision was incorrect. It's been determined to be correct, according to every procedure that we follow. So well, that is the end of that. <clears throat> so, in other words, the fact that uh, the state's attorneys, okay, were able to hinder the appeal process, and this is what – this no is what the courts. Was, no such thing was found. It was determined that everything followed the. The law. record was not the the whole record was not before the appeals court. In fact, they refused to amend the record. I tried to uh, bring in all the facts that I'm relating to you now, which is a matter of court record. The state's attorney knew all these things. They knew when they when they brought me uh, to trial, and they made uh, bold assertions about uh, a prior. Uh, allegations of prior bad acts. None of this was true. I mean, these are the things that can't be overlooked. They, mean, they, uh, they are not overlooked in our system. You can file a complaint in the Superior Court. You can, in other words, you can appeal from your conviction if you've got some evidence that uh, there was some wrongdoing. You can file a motion, uh, to, you know, in the Superior Court and go through the normal avenue. What, what you don't have a right to do is to use the statutory provision that says you can come before this court when you have no other avenue of appeal from an adverse judgment in a lower court. Okay. So what you're saying, Your Honor, is, is the fact that the, uh, the statute, uh, the 211 statute, cannot be used for extraordinary circumstances such as mine where where a person uh, it's, it's used for extraordinary circumstances where for some reason there's no other avenue of appeal. If, if one is convicted, one has a right of appeal from that conviction. That's a perfectly normal right that uh, people exercise all of the time. So what Your Honor is suggesting that I go to Superior Court and file a complaint against the state's attorneys? If you have some evidence to support your then, charges. That's then that's already been done. That's already been done. That is now in federal court. That matter is in federal court. All I'm here to do is to reverse the conviction. That's all I'm looking for. It's a fair opportunity, just another trial, a fair trial, which I've never, which I was deprived of a fair trial. Section 2113 is not an available avenue of relief to reverse a conviction in these circumstances. You've had an, have you had an appeal from your conviction? I had an appeal. Actually, it was a, it was a bifurcated appeal. Uh, the, uh, the issues were never handled. All the issues were never put before the, uh, the appeals court. And then when they were, the appeals court uh, blamed me for, uh, for being untimely when it was the state's prosecutor did this. The point I'm getting at is that uh, possibly uh, you, you are right. Of course, you're interpreting the statute uh, literally. But there has to be some mechanism uh, other than filing at Superior Court, which is, uh, I, I just find, uh, uh, not, not very uh, successful. And this is the reason why uh, I've proceeded in, in federal court uh, with, with the, uh, uh, the, uh, the matter. However, there are some uh, drawbacks to doing that because of the conviction. Because the conviction still stands, um, Heck versus Humphrey uh, controls, and a person uh, cannot uh, claim for damages uh, unless the conviction is, uh, is overturned. So uh, there is no recourse in state court and other than this forum. 
and this is the only forum that I have, and, and I'm getting a message from, from the court right now uh, because it, it, it appears as though I've wasted the court's time, and uh, I, I feel that that's, uh, uh, that's regretful, uh, re regretful for not only myself but also for the court. There's no way that a person that, uh, that's been <coughs> wronged in this way, uh, this is retaliation because of free speech, because I, I, I spoke out. Uh, I'm being uh, punished for that, and uh, it's just unfair. But uh, what you're saying is that uh, I've wasted your time, and, and I, I see my time is up. And uh, if you could see it to look somewhere in the papers, in the brief, and find something that will at least allow, my, uh, at least allow me an opportunity to, uh, to have a fair trial, to present my case to a jury. Uh, because, uh, quite frankly, uh, the same thing could happen, in my opinion, to, to anyone on this panel. The jury was the least to blame. The jury in this case was the least to blame. Thank because you. Thank you, Mr. Vauter. Your time is up. Thank you. Thank you, Your Honor. Ms. Fitzpatrick? Uh, may I please the court, Your Honor? Uh, my name is Jane Fitzpatrick. I'm an assistant district attorney for Middlesex County and represent the Commonwealth in this case. If the court has no questions of me, I would rest on my memorandum. Thank you, Ms. Fitzpatrick. Thank you. All right. Hear ye, hear ye, hear ye. All persons having anything further to do before the Honorable, the Justices of the Supreme Judicial Court, now sitting at Boston, within and for the Commonwealth, at present to part and give your attendance at this place tomorrow morning at 9 o'clock, to which time and place the sitting of this court is now adjourned. God save the Commonwealth of Massachusetts.